Okay, so a few days ago, McLaren released a new concept F1 car called the MP4X. Now, this was meant to be their vision of what a future F1 could be like. So I thought I'd go through and analyze the aerodynamics of it, and so you can get an idea of what they're trying to achieve and what's going on. Now, one of the things to keep in mind here is that this car would have been sort of designed and drawn up by largely a graphics-based team with some knowledge of aerodynamics rather than their actual aerodynamicists whose time they obviously don't want to waste on something like this. So they would have just given them a basic brief and then they would have come up with something that looks really cool. So some of the aero features on it are not going to quite be ideal. But let's go through and have a look. Now there's three main aerodynamic technologies that this car boasts that aren't in F1 currently. One is an enclosed cockpit. Obviously the enclosed cockpit will allow for better airflow as well as providing better driver protection. Two is plasma jet, jet actuators. Now these act similarly to vortex generators in terms of energizing the boundary layer, although they take um, their energy from an external electrical power source and use that to energize the airflow by creating very small plasma arcs that go there. This is actually an existing technology. This isn't future, this exists currently, it's just not in the rules and it requires a fairly large amount of power, which is probably why they're not going to use it for a while. Um, the third technology is a sculpted floor, and I'll discuss what they've done with the floor in this. And basically, currently in F1, they regulate a flat floor um, with mandated plank in the center. And this is obviously with free floor rules, so it has much more interesting floor profiles. So let's go through some of the pictures from their press release, and let's see what's going on. So this is the top-down view, and from the top-down we can see we're still maintaining a lot of the current F1 profile from sort of here forwards. We've got this sort of inwards cut where the side pod is, we've got a front wing profile, but then as we get to the back, we can see it fills out more sort of like an Indy car, as we're now running fared rear wheels. And the same at the front, we're running fully fared front wheels. Now, the advantages of fairing a wheel are pretty obvious. You can reduce a lot of the drag and the, the flow disruption associated with the rotating tire by shielding it. You can direct the airflow away from the front and you can sort of stop it from interacting and creating as much tire squirt which can affect other areas of the diffuser. Now the interesting thing to note here is that because these go to the end of this wing that would mean you wouldn't have any sort of vortices being generated off your wing tips. Well not a significant one anyway because this is acting as a giant end plate which means the way that you handle your floor and under tray has to be done quite differently. Now if we look in detail at what's going on the floor here, we can see a few things. Firstly, there's these vein structures here, which look like some sort of vortex generator to me. And secondly, we've got big tunnels running through the center here. Now, if we have a look at how these aerodynamic devices are shaped, they've got sharp corners and stuff like that, I'd say that's more of sort of designer's liberty there. You would go for more of a curved profile if you were trying to get a nice aerodynamically good profile with no separation so that they would work effectively to generate vortices. Now, you want vortices in your underbody because vortices will generate regions of low pressure. Low pressure on the surface of your um, under tray will give you more downforce. And F1 currently are often trying to ingest these vortices from other locations because they're obviously not allowed to put these generators in the floor. This would enable you to do that. Now we can see as we come to the back that we've got sort of a separated floor. It looks like there's intakes that are actually ingesting the airflow off here and a secondary tunnel coming through here. Now, Again, I think this is somewhat of a degree of designer's liberty, but you can see how by separating off the tire area, it would be useful. I'm sure this isn't anywhere near the optimal configuration, but a separated floor section like this would allow you to manage your tire wakes better and get better extraction through the under tray such that you could get more downforce overall. You can also see it expands that way by this coming together. So we've got that big exit area without having an enormous upkick. And that's one of the advantages of tunnels. Looking from the back, we can see these tunnels again, but you'll notice that they've got no real strakes or anything. And I feel like they probably should have some strakes in them because the proximity of the tire there, even though the tire is gonna be managed better by this overall body shape, it's still gonna generate some degree of jetting into those tunnels. You are gonna get a degree of vortex ingestion. So again, probably a design liberty. You can tell, just to prove my point about them taking design liberties, these tires are all grooved, which looks cool, but of course you'd be running slicks if you were serious about performance. Also from here, you can actually see how they're managing the high pressure region on the top of the tire by venting it out the back and over the top. And this is something they'd obviously want to do. You can see stuff like this on various other types of cars of this nature. Looking from the front now, we can see that the wing has a raised section with two two-tier side sections. 
Now, we're not getting as many sort of elements as you'd see in the current F1 cars because a lot of those elements are to measure the severe adverse pressure gradient encountered on the front side of the wheel where we have the wing ramping up. Now, that's obviously not a thing here because we don't have a wing in front of the wheel. But you'll notice that we've still got this high sort of area here. Now, this is providing an area to intake air for the under tray of the car. This double tier wing allows you to have a wing and ground effect here and then use this wing as sort of structural support coming up to there to the wheel support. In saying that, I think that you'd have a hard time without any external support at the rear to get this whole assembly to hold itself together, right? Like the torsional stiffness through here is gonna be very difficult to achieve. You'll also note that these sections here are actually sloping inwards, so they'd actually be accelerating the air towards the tire. I don't think that's a correct design decision. Again, there's an aesthetic decision. If you were trying to really maximize your tire performance and your downforce, you'd have that sloping forward and then have an extraction region on the inside such that it would be slowing down. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, here, if we're looking from the side, currently it goes like that, and then there's the tire there. What you actually have is the outside of it ramps up like that, the inside ramps like that, and it's acting as a small diffuser into the tire area. So another change that's slightly a little bit off. Looking further from above, we can see that there's no sort of multi-element here. It just sort of goes straight and then it kinks. And this is again, not an aerodynamic profile you sort of see. You would see probably a dual element wing here, potentially more depending on what sort of downforce they've got. Obviously I have no idea what figures they're trying to target here. The design of the car looks like it's more for a low drag than a high downforce configuration. But I would imagine multi-element here and you definitely want to smooth in and out that junction there. The sharpness and everything, there's a lot of angles on this car. You can see a lot of angles, particularly around the inlet. We can see sharp corners down in here. You round those off on a realistic car because sharp corners mean vortices in bad spots and a lot of flow separation. So you generally wouldn't be doing that, but it looks really cool, but it's not realistic. Looking just a bit closer at that wheel management, we can see that all these wheels now have covers over the top of the, the, um, the wheel face. Now at the front, there's quite a large intake for the brake ducts, but at the rear, there's not much. So I'm assuming that they're gonna put this down to the fact that it's electric or hybrid powertrain is getting a lot of energy recovery from there, so they don't need much brake cooling. But it's still an interesting design choice. Now obviously you do want covers on the wheels because stationary covers on the wheels means you don't have the outside edge of the wheel that's rotating, interfering with the airflow. We go back to F1 a few years back where they had these same covers and they do provide improved performance for the overall wheel system. Looking from the side, we can see that it's very low profile. That enclosed canopy really brings the profile down and we can see that the airflow would be quite good over here and we get good flow to the rear wing. What you can also see though is that there's no intake at the top for the engine anymore. So the engine would have to be drawing all its air from those side pods. And I didn't really see many exits on the car for where the side pod air is actually coming out or the exhaust for that matter actually. So how they'd be managing their internal cooling flow would be very interesting to see. And just looking at the rear, we can really see my point here about the whole design for looks rather than for performance. If we look here at these slots here, they're literally just cut through the end plate. They're not sculpted, they don't have the curvature profile, so they're not venting that top pressure off as they do on a current F1 car. And if you have a look at the wing itself, again, this is almost like they've gotten a dual element wing and then sort of joined it together. You can see this weird sort of S bend in the profile. And it's not a very realistic profile. Again, these sort of support wings here that are kind of like beam wings underneath the back, why not just run a wing across the entire length of it? It doesn't make any sense. It looks really cool, but it's not aerodynamically the best solution. Then just looking at this overall view from the car, we can see a few little bits and pieces. Um, one is, I'm unsure whether this is a, a cooling duct or whether that's through flow. I, it looks to me like it's through flow to the rear over the top of the diffuser. That's good because you get more air over the top of your diffuser. If you've got air over the top of your diffuser, you can use it to help you work the underside of the diffuser more and you can get better diffuser performance overall. At the front of these wheel vent areas, we can see that they've got this weird sort of intake here. Now, at first I thought this might've been a cooling inlet, but then of course they've got the, the brake inlet there instead. So why they've got this here doesn't really make any sense. Um, like I say, tenuous. There's also not much in the way of sort of driver cabin intake air, which you would need a lot more of when you're running a closed cockpit. And here we can kind of see more of them trying to manage that wheel wake as an excess. They're obviously trying to condense that, smooth it out, eject it, um, in a uniform manner with some veins and stuff. But this exit area seems very small for the size of the wheel. I know they're venting off here, but 
you'd think they'd give it a little bit more area to bend out, close to what the rear wheels are doing actually, where it has quite a large amount of area here and it's being somewhat utilized by the secondary upward lifting wing here, so it's not going to waste. Although even here, I'd imagine that some DTM style strakes across here or either Le Mans style strakes vertically to sort of clean out that wake. Either one of those options would be superior to just venting it open out the back. But this looks really cool, doesn't it? So yeah, that's the aerodynamics of the MP4X, somewhat myth busted for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is a bit of an unusual format for me. I've never done this before, so let me know if you like it. And if you liked it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hopefully see you next time.